Welcome to the Masterclass on Pydentic AI, a new framework for building AI agents. In this Masterclass, we're learning about some of the core features of Pydentic AI. Now, you may be familiar with Pydentic. It's a great framework in Python for validating code. And now the same team has built Pydentic AI, which uses simple Python methods to build effective AI agent systems. We aim to hit all key features of the framework in this masterclass, plenty of examples. So by the end of this, you should have the confidence and knowledge to build your own agents. Today, we're taking a detailed look at dependency injection, a feature that is unique to Pydentic AI among LLM frameworks. Now, dependency injection is not a new concept. It's been around in many languages for a long time. In Java, for example, Spring Boot uses it very effectively. In other languages, including C++, Ruby and Rails, and Python, dependency injection is a very common architectural pattern and is a software pattern that promotes loose coupling by injecting dependencies such as services, objects, or configurations into a component rather than having the component create them itself. And this happens typically during runtime, so there is no compile time dependencies. This improves testability, maintainability, and the flexibility, making the code easier to maintain over time. This is especially important for agentic systems because frameworks change very often, so interfaces are updated and you need to constantly maintain your code to comply with the new API standards. All right, so that's dependency injection. And today we're going to cover a good chunk of it and see how Pydentic AI implements dependency injection. Pydentic AI uses DI to provide data and services to the agent's system prompts, tools, and result validators. DI in Pydentic AI uses some of the best practices from software engineering in order to make dependencies type safe, understandable, easy to test, and ultimately easier to deploy in production. Remember, it's one thing to design an agentic system that works on my laptop. It's a completely different story to work in a team environment and it's a completely different story to deploy into production and maintain a large agentic system. All of these require levels of magnitude of architectural design. While it's quite easy to come up with a proof of concept or weekend project, working on a large LLM project requires architectural thought and dependency injection plays a critical role when designing larger systems. We'll see examples of how DI works in all three cases, so stick around. We'll start the coding tutorial soon, but before we do, let me tell you briefly about the new school community. We launched a new school community for AI software developers, which is an exclusive community designed to bring the best content possible for a community of growing AI developers. Here, you'll see videos, resources, community support for all sorts of questions. It's a very lively environment where you can attend weekly Q&A sessions, strategy calls, and get a one-on-one -on -one with me when you join the school. Learn new skills and benefit from the community as well as the combined knowledge of many in this community. All right, let's move on. Today, we'll work on five examples, starting with the Hello World, then moving on to more complex DI scenarios. In the Hello World example, we'll cover a career coach agent, which we will provide a prompt and it will suggest ways in which we can transform our career into one that uses AI. So it's a simple example where we will use dependency injection on multiple levels, both at the agent level, but also at the tools level. So it's going to be a great overall example. We'll move on to system prompt dependencies for which we're going to create an insurance agent and the insurance customer support agent will answer questions from customers such as what is my policy deductible? How much more do I have to spend? And if I'm not happy, can I escalate this to a manager? That's the example what we're going to use for system prompt dependencies. Next, we're going to move to the tool dependencies. We're going to emulate a bank loan application agent system. It's going to be quite interesting because we're going to use an LLM call inside a tool and the tool's job will be to qualify an applicant based on their data, including salary, financial data, and provide a risk profile 
so that the loan origination agent has the information necessary to approve the application. It's going to be a super interesting example uh, when we use the tool dependencies and get this bank loan application agent to approve um, applications. In the fourth example, we'll use result validator dependencies. In here, we're going to create a medical team of specialist doctors. This is another way of applying the dependency injection, this time into result validators. We're going to have a team of four specialists. We're going to have a patient case. The patient case will be provided to each specialist. The specialist will provide their diagnosis, treatment options, and then we will have a reasoning agent for which we're going to use DeepSeq R1 to come up with the final diagnosis and treatment plan. So it's going to be another great example. Finally, in the combined example, we're going to use all three ways to do DI, that is system prompt, agent, tool, and result validator. In here, we're going to build a stock market advisor agent. The stock agent will retrieve stock prices using the Yahoo Finance APIs and provide information about a particular stock. That's the plan for today. To keep this video concise, we'll cover the first example in full detail, while the rest will be available in the extended version. All right, let's dive in. In this Hello World example, we're going to start by importing our dependencies. And for this, we're going to rely on OpenAI's GPT-40 Mini. That's our go-to model for a lot of these examples. And let's start with our simple agent definition. And the system prompt here is that you're an experienced career coach. And here the question from the applicant will be, how do I transform my career from a traditional into one that uses AI? So it's an interesting question, which is being asked by a lot of different groups today, whether you're a software developer, system analyst, tester, or any other group, you are wondering how to do this. It's a simple example. I'd like to point out how we do dependency injections. So if you look at the system prompt definition here, you will see that we're providing the run context. And inside the run context, we're taking the industry specialization from the user prompt, and we're injecting that industry specialization into our system prompt giving our agent a much richer system prompt. Let's continue this example and now we're going to and now we're going to open a terminal and let's run our first example. Python 7.1 hello world and here I'm your career coach. Please provide an industry specialization. So in this case, let's start with a database admin. And our expectation is for our agent to take this and give us a 10 point plan with actionable items, how to transform our career into one that uses AI on a daily basis. So let's see what the agent comes up with. The industry specialization, the database admin is being passed as a dependency to our system prompt, which then gets appended to the standard system prompt defined in the agent. So let's go ahead and run this. And as we can see here, we already have a 10 step plan and career advice for transitioning a traditional database admin role to one where AI plays a greater role. So it starts with assessment of your current skills. Step two is understanding the AI fundamentals and then moving on to exploring AI applications in database management. So this is industry specific advice. It's not a generic advice because we passed the database admin is a dependency. We injected it into the system prompt. The LLM was able to provide a much more targeted advice compared to just a bland LLM question. Step number four is learn AI tools and technologies that applies across industries. Step five is gain hands-on experience and use real world databases to build a small AI driven applications or automate existing database tasks. Very targeted, very DBA friendly advice on career development. It goes on to provide 10 actionable steps for this, including a conclusion. Let's ask another question, this time for a mainframe developer. Mainframe development is still an important line of development business, especially for financial organizations. And there's a lot of mainframe developers that are looking to upgrade their skills and perhaps inject 
AI into mainframe development. So here we have targeted advice for mainframe developers in particular. So the career advice starts with transitioning a traditional development, self-assessment, research AI applications for mainframes, what is available, what is not, upskill in AI fundamentals. So start with the fundamentals, build a good sound foundation where you can start building more skills. And it provides more advice as we go. So the system prompt was to provide 10 actionable items. And then we injected the context, which is mainframe development. So that is our introductory example. I hope this was helpful. You can take this, you can take this example and apply dependency injection to other areas such as the tools, uh, result validators, and the agent itself. All right, let's move on. So we've come to the end of this tutorial. Dependency injection is a software design pattern that promotes loose coupling by injecting dependencies such as services, objects, database configurations, anything, API calls, client libraries into a component rather than having the component create them itself. So this reduces the dependencies at compile time, moves the compile time dependencies into runtime. Now, you still have to provide it during runtime, but at least when the APIs change, you're not breaking your systems and you introduce loose coupling that improves testability, maintainability, and flexibility, making it easier to manage systems at scale. I mentioned this in the beginning, but building prototypes with small agents, whether used by Identic AI or Langgraph or any other framework or no framework whatsoever, for small prototypes, weekend projects, or even MVPs is rather straightforward. The problems start happening when you start scaling up and building enterprise grade systems. Then you have to implement solid principles of software engineering that promote maintainability, promote testability for the long term. Pydentic AI uses a dependency injection system to provide data and services to your agent system prompts, tools, and result validators, making Pydentic AI unique among these agent frameworks where other frameworks are not as advanced in this as Pydentica. So that's a great feature of this framework, making it one of the favorite choices. All right, so next time we'll look into retries and usage limits in Pydentica. Using these AI ops concepts will make your agents more reliable and will protect operations from cost overruns. But for today, this is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learn how to make your agent architectures more flexible through dependency injection. If you get value from this series, please consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you and see you in the next one.